love lift the flap books and touch and feel books and other kinds of books that have these 3D tactile manipulative features in them. And that's exactly why publishers put them into books for the very youngest children. But do they actually help children learn the information that the book is meant to teach if it's an educational book, such as a first words book? Well, we recently looked at that question in a study with two-year-olds where we used a book to teach them a new word and looked at whether flaps helped or hindered them from learning that new word. So in this particular study, we looked at some two-year-olds. Half of the kids we gave them a picture book that had flaps in it and um, I wanted to look at whether they could learn a new word for an unfamiliar food that they had not um, seen before. So I picked a book that had um, sort of a range of different kinds of foods that they may or may not know. And for the other half of the kids, we used exactly the same book, except we sealed all the flaps shut, so they couldn't um, actually pick anything up off the page. And then we wanted to know if we tried to teach them um, a new word for a fruit or a vegetable that they didn't already know, would they be more or less likely to learn it from the book that had flaps versus the book that didn't? So what we did, first we needed to find out which of the food words in the book they didn't already know. The one that was the most unfamiliar was starfruit. So we only had one child in a sample of about 40 kids that uh, the parents said that they thought they knew the, what the word starfruit was. So we made that be our target. So we took all the kids and we read through the book um, and we labeled every fruit and vegetable six times. So the researcher would say something like, um, um, this is watermelon. Watermelon is red and juicy. Watermelon has seeds. A lot of two-year-olds know what the shape of a star is and we didn't want them to get star fruit correct based on shape rather than actually knowing what the fruit or the picture of the fruit looked like. So we named this with its Latin name, which is carambola. So we would say, this is carambola. Carambola is juicy. Carambola is green. Both groups of kids heard carambola six times. And then we took the books away and we wanted to know, will they recognize another picture of a star fruit or carambola? So on each one of these pages, there is a target fruit or vegetable and then two distractors. And we ask for the target by name and ask the child to point to it. So if they know the word, they should get it right more than 33% of the time. So we would say, show me broccoli and look at which one they point. Show me orange show me watermelon, show me carambola. So that was looking at picture recognition. So if they learned what this thing is called from the picture book context, then they should recognize it more than 33% of the time. They should pick this rather than these foils or distractors that are kind of similar color and, and features and so forth. So that was one way of checking uh, whether they'd learned what carambola referred to. And then the other way, and this is the most important part, is whether or not they generalize to real objects. And the structure of the question was the same as with the pictures. So we, we would say, show me carambola, and then give it to them and look at whether they picked uh, the star fruit more, more than one third of the time, given the other uh, examples. And what we found is that the kids in the lift the flap group were completely random at recognizing carambola in both the picture and with the real objects. So a third of the time they thought this was carambola, a third of the time they thought this was carambola, and a third of the time they thought this was carambola. The kids who had no flaps to lift, who had everything else exactly the same except for the flaps, guessed this 67% of the time. So twice as often as the kids who um, had the flap book. And so that tells us that they were significantly more likely to have learned the thing that Carambola referred to in the group that didn't have any flaps to manipulate. So what that tells us is that if you want to use picture books in an educational context and not just for fun, it helps probably not to have bells and whistles that um, can detract their attention away from the content they're, they're hearing. What we think probably is happening here is that the kids' attention is divided between what they're doing with their fingers on the page and what they're hearing the person say. And we know that two-year-olds have uh, very poor control over their attentional abilities. So um, anything that you can do to minimize distraction in that context makes it more likely that they're going to take in the information that you're talking about.